Dear students, today I am going to describe the backgrounder of the subject ethology and I am also going to mention some of the concepts on which the entire subject stands. If we go to the etymology of the word ethology, ethos means habits or conventions. And ethologos means to study. That means ethology is the study of animal behavior or habits or conventions. Conrad Lorenz was regarded as father of ethology, whereas Nicotinburgen had coined the term ethology. Now, what are these habits, conventions, or we call which we call behavior? These are externally recognizable changes that brings about the communication and can release behavior patterns in the or other organisms or the organisms which are which responds. Now, what are these externally recognizable changes? These externally recognizable, recognizable changes are innumerable. They can be movements of body or body portions. They can be facial expressions or production of sounds or what you call as vocalizations. Posturing, changes in colors, release of odors through pheromones or through sweat, freeze reactions and piloerections. These externally recognizable changes are brought about by coordinated activities of nervous system, endocrine system and musculoskeletal system of an organism as a consequence of a stimulus. Now, you one thing has to be noted over here is that the stimulus, word stimulus is very important here. We'll, uh, later on, we'll study in detail what the stimulus, what importance does the stimulus carries. Now, there are various uh, preceding uh, or basic uh, uh, theories or branches on which ethology is based. First is ecoethology, is the relationship between behavior of a species and other living and non-living components of the ecosystem. In ethophysiology, we study neuroethology, which deals with sensory processes and central nervous system that underlines a particular behavior. Ethoendocrinology uh, studies the relationship between hormones and a particular behavior. In ethogenetics, we study the genetic basis of a behavior and the fixed action pattern which we, you are going to study uh, later will fall in this category. Now, one more term is there, social biology. It means it is the study of the spatial and temporal distribution of individuals and their relationship to the living and non-living environment. Now, why this, uh, why do we study this social biology? Because it is the basis of formation of specific social structure which can have selective advantages as far as the survival of the animals are concerned. Now, sociobiology deals with the mechanism that determine social organization of a species or a population and how it is maintained. So, uh, social structure has its own importance in uh, genesis of many a behavior in uh, the populations which are uh, inhabiting a particular habitat and at a particular time. Now, uh, let us go to some history of this uh, 
newer discipline that is ethology aristotle uh, long back in 372 bc for the first time was uh, uh, described animal behavior in historia animalium then for the first time scientific study of animal behavior was made by charles darwin in uh, and he mentioned uh, animal behavior uh, in his book expression of emotions in man and animals john romance he first described animal intelligence then oscar hinroth he uh, studied eco ethology of anatidae family in detail then the theory of imprinting was developed by conrad lawrence and Carl von Frisch observed that the bees perceive colors and can locate sun even during overcast conditions. They could perceive ultraviolet rays and can communicate the direction and distance of food through waggle, tail wagging and circle dance. And for that he got Nobel Prize also. Nicotine Burgeon studied for butterflies and digger wasps also three spined stickleback and girls so this was actually the background of this comparatively newer discipline that is ethology or study of animal behavior now let us come to the concepts of ethology the whole subject of ethology stands on some concepts uh, like concept of motivation then concept of fixed action pattern then we have uh, uh, concept of releasers then we have concept of innate relate uh, innate release mechanism or IRM concept of action specific energy the concept of physiological basis of behavior the concept of learning concept of behavioral genetics concept of evolution of behavior these are the concept uh, which we are going to study uh, today let us first of all take the concept of motivation motivation is actually the willingness to expand energy to achieve a goal or a reward so in that sense we can define it as goal directed activity the motivation level tends to decrease when the activity is performed as usually happen to all of us but rises again after period of inertia or inactivity this period of inertia is called as refractory period. Say for instance, a hungry dog has the highest motivational level or uh, we can also say and uh, the motivation level of the dog uh, towards achieving its goal of getting a bone or food is highest in the beginning. But as soon as uh, it gets the food, and it consumes it again fall the at the motivation level diminishes after eating the food or bone to the minimal minimal level now there are three phases as far as concept uh, concept of motivation is concerned what are the uh, these three phases first is the appetitive phase appetitive phase is also called as searching phase and it is the period when the natural drive or desire to satisfy bodily need say for instance mate or eating food or drinking water or anything else is at the highest level here the searching process begins and searching is uh, very vigorous in this and it helps uh, the animal to get the goal or the desired product.
so the uh, when the searching is complete or when and when the animal gets its desirable thing that is it uh, if it happens to find mate or food or water to drink then what happens the searching stops over here and another phase of motivation that is called as consumatory phase begins this consumatory phase is also called as orientation and if we wish to define the second stage it is the period of response immediately following the appetitive or searching behavior it is a behavior pattern that occurs in response to a stimulus and after uh, getting this stimulus uh, a sense of satisfaction is achieved say for example after searching behavior if prey is found the animal eats the prey or drinks the water or finds the mate and mating is performed the response diminish, diminishes here hereafter so this phase is termed as consumatory behavior the third phase in the concept of motivation is refractory period or quiescent period it is a period of inertia or the diminished response following consumatory behavior during which the nervous system the endocrine system the musculoskeletal system largely remain unresponsive to further stimulation what i wanted to convey is that even if the stimulus is present in this state that is the third state which is quiescent phase or the refractory phase no further desire or searching or appetitive behavior is showcased by the animal then uh, so i think i have uh, uh, made you understand what is the concept of motivation this is the first concept uh, uh, what what it uh, means is that the animal just give a hunt to what it desires this is the first stage and this is uh, placed under the first phase which is appetitive or searching behavior now when it finds the desired thing the searching or appetitive behavior ceases there then the second phase begins which is consumatory behavior or that which sets the animal that means it the animal orients around the goal and consumes it the goal can be a mate or food or the drinking water after sating itself with mating drinking water or eating food the animal thereafter enters a period of refractory behavior refractory behavior that means the period of inactivity this is uh, a very important stage in the sense that during this phase even if you present the animal with prey mate food or feed it is not going to respond because the physiology the endocrine system and the muscle musculoskeletal system they do not respond during this period so uh, students uh, in the next uh, uh, lecture this is all in this next uh, lecture in the next lecture we are going to study the concept of fixed action pattern that means the action patterns which are there etched inside the gene or which are innate and which are not taught 
and uh, so uh, until then thank you so much